next. Oh. Goddamn creationism. Ah. <sighs> There's nothing funny about the tools of capital. Ask Compu. Wheel of entitlement. Spin, spin, spin. Show us what trouble we'll be in. That's pretty good. Um. Evolution hoax. That should pull up some creationist videos, right? Proof evolution is a hoax. Alright, what's up guys? AC here. I'm back. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And today we are going to speak about proof that evolution is a huge hoax. I found a really great article by Mr. David J. Stewart. And he starts off by saying, Recently, a thought captivated my mind that proves that the theory of evolution is a big hoax. It isn't. Uh, evolution is one of the... Uh, this is hard to measure, so I'm not going to say that statement. It's an incredibly well-documented and evidenced truism of biology, right? We understand evolution relatively well. Uh, basically, everything we would understand about biology would have to be wrong in order for evolution to turn out to be some fake thing, right? We've witnessed evolution... Um, like, you can do uh, very short-lived species, whether we're talking about, like, single-cell organisms or something like gnats that are, like, very easy to breed. There have been experiments done with those in which you can see the progress over time as how the species changes from generation to generation. It's something we understand relatively well compared to something even like gravity, right? Gravity, we understand how it works, the results of gravity, but we don't necessarily know, like, what causes gravity outside of, like, it's like a, a space-time bending. It, like, causes, you know, whatever the fuck that means. Not a physicist, not a biologist, not a anythingist, but... We understand evolution pretty well. It is a thing that happens. The thought is simple. E. coli also is a thing that they use to experiment in labs with in terms of evolution. Thank you, Baja Blast. And yet profound. Why is there no recorded history before approximately 4000 BC? Okay, first of all, there is... You can find uh, 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 evidence of civil civilizations before that. But let's see what the oldest written history is. Oldest written history. Sumerian cuneiform, 3000 BC. Here we go. Let me find something else, though. Uh, oldest known civilization... In the world. Sumerians, 3000 BC still. I know we found further back, though. Uh, Homo sapien earliest date. 200,000 years ago was when Homo sapiens began to rise from... What was prior to Homo sapiens? It might have been Homo erectus. I'm not sure. Um, anyway. Well, the answer is obvious. There was no history. No, it's because A, people had to invent writing in order to have written history. And secondly, they didn't have ways of preserving that history over time, even if they did have writing prior to that. Think about it. Evolutionists claim... There was pottery from ancient China dating to 50,000 BC. Yeah, there's like tools and stuff that you can find that are really, really old too. Man evolved over billions of years. Yes, as has everything else on this planet. 
if they were if there was any truth to these false claims by these scientists then man's historical record should span back at least hundreds of thousands of years no because human beings had to invent writing in order for that to happen and even once they invented writing they would have to put it in such a form that it would survive tens of thousands of years it's entirely possible because human beings have existed again for like 200,000 years in terms of like more or less our current form homo sapiens right you can find really old cave paintings for instance that are older than this but um that are older than the written history i'm talking about um but even if someone had developed a system of writing prior to 3000 bc when Sumerians and stuff came about and, and invented, like, cuneiform writing, they would have to document it in a way that would be preserved. Even if you write it on something like a rock, over 5,000 years, it's going to get eroded away. So how are you, before metallurgy, before the ability to put things on very hard surfaces that won't change over time... How are you going to be able to keep that written history without it being destroyed? Just by time. You can't. It's unfortunate. I'm sure there are a lot of very interesting events that have happened over the course of Homo sapiens existing. I'm sure there were tons of tribal warfare that we're not privy to. I'm sure there's very interesting accounts that could have been told as to discovering new lands, because of course human beings started in Africa and then spread out. But unfortunately, those are just accounts that we're never going to have. It's sad, but it's true. But that doesn't mean that nothing existed prior to that. It's a, if a tree falls in the forest and no one was around to hear it, does it make a sound argument? You're saying that because there's no writing from that time, it means those times didn't exist. Despite the fact that we have a bunch of other evidence that it did in fact happen. Other things happened in that span of time. People just didn't have the ability to write things down. If not millions. There is no record of a cataclysmic event that destroyed mankind prior to 4000 BC. You don't have to have a catastrophic event in order to not have a written record of a time before writing. There was no written record because writing didn't exist. Someone had to invent writing. It wasn't just a thing that sprung into existence the second Homo sapiens became a thing. It was something that had to be developed. And not only had to be developed, had to be taught to others and spread, right? You basically have to sit down and think about this, because this is, like, weird to think about. But you really have to think about this. Imagine that you're Grog. My name is Grog. Grog. Mm. I am going to... We, I communicate to other people in very simplistic language... Um, and I need to come up with a way for us to communicate to each other in a non-verbal way, outside of just, obviously, gestures and stuff. I say to another person, let's, let's say my name's Wilma, and then we have Fred, Barney, and, uh, uh, what was the neighbor's name? Betty. I need to go up to them and say, okay, hear me out. You know how we talk to each other? with our mouths and they go yeah what if we could talk to each other with symbols that i write on things they have to all get on board with this i then have to come up with some uniform way of describing things to other people and cuneiform is more akin to like hieroglyphics than it is like our modern day phonetic alphabets right so you have to say this symbol means a rock this symbol means a chicken. This symbol means a whatever. Because your writing system is only helpful if you're not the only person who understands it, right? You not only have to develop an entire system of writing and symbols that mean different things. You need to then teach it to enough, of, to enough other people that it becomes useful. And that's a huge almost insurmountable task it's amazing that that it even happened but eventually it did and we do have written records from a long time ago just not prior to that amazing feat being accomplished and if there were 
surely some of the survivors would have passed this information down to generations to follow. Apparently, you've never played the telephone game. You can't pass down oral traditions for tens of thousands of years and have them remain intact. Bible dates creation as we know it today at approximately 4,000 B.C. Thus, it was approximately 6,000 years ago that God, Jesus Christ, created the heavens and the earth in six days. If that's your claim, which it's fine if that's your claim, you need to then evidence that claim for people to take it seriously. If your claim is that the earth is 6,000 years old, you not only have to evidence the fact that it is 6,000 years old, but if you're specifically saying it was the God of the Bible who did it, you need to provide evidence for that claim. You also need to explain away, like, the fact that we can radioact, do radiometric dating on various materials and see that they're older than that. Much older. Not only that, But we have stars in the sky. Think about this. The light from stars are so distant, it takes light years and light years for their light to even get to us. So many of the stars in our night sky are more than 6,000 light years away. So how would their light get to us in order for us to see that light in the sky if the Earth were only 6,000 years old and the universe itself were the same? It was 6,000 years ago that Jesus Christ spoke the stars into existence. And it was 6,000 years ago that Jesus spoke animals, fish, plants, and land into existence. Okay, it was 6,000 years ago that God formed a man out of the dust of... The only person who can get away with the earth is 6,000 years old is good omens. <laughs> well, yeah, so that's fiction. So, of course. The earth. So... Such biblical claims seem absurd to modern evolutionists who have convinced themselves. They seem unreasonable to anyone who isn't a Christian, specifically a young earth creationist Christian, because there isn't evidence for that. We have evidence of things much older than that on planet earth. That the earth is billions of years old. Ironically, they have absolutely no evidence of such longevity. Fossil records, carbon dating, radiometric dating outside of dating carbon. We have, again, the fact that we can see stars that are further than 6,000 light years away. Um, We have, again, evidence of things before that, like cave paintings. And we're just talking about humanity here, not uh, uh, stuff including other animals. Again, like the fossil record. We have, oh boy... The fact that the moon exists and we know more or less how it was formed. Like, there are countless things that show the Earth is more than 6,000 years old. And a lot of evolutionists have sought out dishonest scientists who distort the facts, use false, faulty testing methods, and make erroneous assumptions. Such as? Evolution is, at best, still a theory. <laughs> Gravity is also a theory. In science, theory doesn't mean what it means colloquially. A theory is something that's very well understood, right? If you get to the level where you're calling something like the theory of gravity or the theory of evolution, it means that it's a series of conclusions that have been tested and found to be true so far, because again, All conclusions in science are tentative. However, it seems that evolution and gravity are true. So we have the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, the germ theory of disease. All of these things are theories, but that doesn't mean they're guesses, right? It means that they're a series of facts that we have found to be true based on the testing we have done. Yet, you know, we have these kids who are in these godless public schools, a.k.a. indoctrination camps. (laughs) As opposed to you, who clearly have done a lot of tests on whether or not the biblical God is true. You weren't indoctrinated, of course not, because what you believe is true. Mm Mm-hmm. All across the world, um, and they're being taught evolution as it were, as it, 
As if it were a fact. As far as we understand, it is a fact, right? As far as we understand, it is a fact. If you have actual evidence that isn't the case, and you can somehow falsify the very concept of ev evolution, you would be one of the most lauded biologists of all time. You would completely shake the foundations of biology as we know it. You can't just make the claim that it's untrue without evidence, considering that, again, evolution is such a well-documented and evidenced under... Uh, 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 what's the word I'm thinking of? A well-documented and evidenced um, occurrence, more or less. You know, and completely, you know, denying the students, you know, really just denying the biblical account. Okay, if you believe that the biblical account of creation is true, you need to evidence that fact. You would need to take your hypothesis, which is what you think theory means, but it's not. You would need to take the hypothesis that the biblical account, as told in Genesis, is accurate. You would then need to test that hypothesis in order for people to even get to the step where they can test your hypothesis using the same tests as you. Creationism. So, you know, the word of God makes infinite more sense than the fairy tale of evolution. Really? You're calling evolution a fairy tale when literally the Bible says that God appeared from nowhere, decided to make human beings, took dirt breathed into it, and made human beings. Seems a little bit of projection. That's all I'm saying. And one of the simplest and best proofs that evolution is a joke is the fact that there is no recorded history prior to 4000 BC. Again, people didn't have writing prior to that as far as we know. The world's history is clearly defined by six world powers since it began okay egypt oh god is she gonna be like these are the civilizations these are the ones Azraea, babylon medo persia greece and rome since rome's fall in okay what about what about china any of the dynasties what about japan what about the fact that United States and Russia are global superpowers now? What about- You're missing, like, most of the civilizations that have ever existed and had power. What are you talking about? In 476 AD, there have been no world powers. Many superpowers, but no world powers. That's some selective-ass bullshit right there when you're like, actually, the United States and Russia, they don't count as world powers because they're actually superpowers. Well, at some point where they were rising through the ranks of power, didn't they at some point reach power before they got superpower? Jeez, this is some selective-ass thinking right here. At the time of Moses, Egypt ruled the world. The Israelis were used as slave labor. What? Ruled world, no world powers. Many superpowers, but no world powers. At the time of Moses, Jesus, Egypt ruled the world. That's not true. They certainly ruled the area in which they lived because Egypt was a huge civilization, but. That doesn't make them the most powerful civilization on the planet. People in China didn't necessarily know they existed. Like, pretty selective. I know the Bible talks a lot about Egypt in the Old Testament, specifically, like, um, in the Pentateuch, um, which is, like, the first five books of the Bible. But, no, that doesn't make Egypt the only world superpower at the time. The Israelis were used as slave labor by Pharaoh to build the pyramids. First of all, the Bible never claims this. The Bible claims that, uh, uh, yes, the Egyptians were in, or not, sorry. The Bible claims in Exodus that the Hebrews were enslaved by the Egyptians. It never in there mentions the pyramids, even once. Um, secondly, 
the evidence we actually have in terms of slavery in Egypt, there's no evidence of Hebrew slaves in Egypt. Like, could it have happened? Maybe. I don't know. But we don't have evidence that it happened. And certainly not to build the pyramids. Because that's not how the pyramids were built. It was not slaves who built the pyramids. Before Egypt, there is absolutely nothing recorded in history about a world power. Yeah, because there was no writing. And also, people were mostly living in, you know, small villages and tribes that probably went to war with each other prior to the founding of city-states and stuff like Mesopotamia and Samaria. Okay. No writings, no carved stones, no battles, no wars. Please, go find me a tablet from 7,000 years ago that you think is in the same shape it was 7,000 years ago. Even if people had developed a system of writing before cuneiform, we have no evidence of it, right? Because over time, presumably people would have written things on slabs, similar to cuneiform. Those slabs, over time, would erode, because that's what rocks do. Of course we have no evidence, because the evidence, if it ever existed, if there was some sort of form of writing prior to cuneiform, it would have disappeared by now, because it's a very, very long time from then, and writing things on rocks is not a particularly good way to preserve them. No countries, no nothing. So evolution is just another theory created by corrupted scientists. Oh no, not scientists. Not the people who made the internet and computer you're using to make this stupid video. That are, of course, inspired by Lucifer. To just continue. Oh, inspired by Lucifer. Gotcha. Astray from the truth. So, a description box. Okay, I gotta write a comment to this. The reason there is no written... There are, rather, are no written accounts before uh, 4000 BC is because the first writing systems were invented. God, I'm bad at typing at that time. You can't have written history before writing. Ah, what else? What else should I say, folks? Yeah, creation to smugness is annoying, I agree. We do, however, have cave paintings and other artifacts that predate 6k years ago. Not to mention radiometric dating that shows the age of the earth <sighs> ba -ba -ba. anything else what do you think A Mesolithic arrangement of 12 pits dated roughly 10,000 years ago. Cool. Thank you for that chat. We also have calendars older than that. Go to this page under prehistory 
to find a calendar as old as 10,000 years old. God, I make too many fucking typos. Oops. Calendars. Prehistory. Can we react to chuds now? We're doing a wheel stream. It depends on the wheel. Why do people ask these questions? Do 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 do. Here's a link to this video if you would like to upvote my comment.